everyone so hopefully you heard that when you try and start your vehicle if you just hear that click that's an indication that starter mode is playing up in case you're ever stuck in this situation so if you've got an automatic car you cannot bump start it so you have to follow this method which i'll show you now this will hopefully get you out in a sticky situation so once again i'll do it again not starting so i'll show you what to do so what you want to do is you want to open up the hood and locate your starter motor which on this particular Land Cruiser Prado is just underneath there at the bottom it's just down there yeah so that's the clicking if you hear that I'll show you what to do so two ways you can either do it from the top like I just showed you or you can come to the bottom here if you got a four-wheel drive, it's a little bit easier. And you just want to take a piece of wood or a large screwdriver or anything, and you just want to give that a solid tap. So you want to tap that in there. So if I zoom in, that's the starter motor there. So always easiest way to find the starter motor is just here at the bell housing. And just, there will be something attached here, if you don't know what that is, but that's what the starter motor is. If you just give it a tap, and then get your helper to try and start it. If it still doesn't start, use that. Try it starting. So you heard that it it tries to start. Otherwise, like I said, you can take your screwdriver in here and just or a piece of wood or something and just keep hitting that starter motor time to removing your starter motor to replace it if you're working on a Prado most of them you can access it from this side of the chassis rail so left side over there at the bottom so you just have to pull the cover off just use a plaster removal tool and just pop the cover off if you have a shorter 17 millimeter spanner it fits right up in there for the top bolt on the starter motor all you have to do is just remove that bolt and then remove this bolt and nut and the starter motor comes out after you remove the 17 mm bottom positive lead and you unplug the connector over there so that connector over there has to be undone and I just undo that as well just to ensure that you don't break the sensor accidentally so once you do that um, the starter motor will come out through this hole here another tip I can give you all um, those who are not familiar with this type of a connector it can be quite difficult especially after 15 20 years on the road this is a push type connector so if we look at it here you push it to release it so when you push it from there it releases from the lock over there so just remember that you push it you can use a set of nose pliers push it here and then pull it and that makes life a lot easier so that's one tip I can give you and when pushing it back in it just literally just slots in and it clicks back in place Just give it a light pull and push, and then you know it's secure in place. It's just very difficult for me to show you, just due to the tight space, but it does come out from here, and you don't have to remove anything else from here if you're in an automatic vehicle. If you're in a manual transmission, you might have to remove the slave cylinder or anything else that might be located in that area, but if you're in an automatic KZJ95 Land Cruiser Prado, it just comes out straight from there. You don't need to remove anything else. Everything can be done from underneath the vehicle. So we've got this Toyota starter motor here. It's from a Prado, but uh, the design is basically the same as most of the Land Cruisers and most of Toyota's heavy duty diesel and bigger engines. Quite similar in design. So this will apply to quite a few different models. So the main issue is this starter is clicking. I'll show you that now. We'll bench test it. I have a battery there and it's set up to the ground is on the body of the starter motor and the positive is just on the top post over there at the top so all we're going to do is we're going to take this positive lead and just jump it from here to here and we'll just watch it or listen to it and see what goes what noise it makes So as you saw, that's the click we hear in the vehicle, pushing out the gear, but it's not spinning it. 
and that's generally because of the context. So you're using a 8mm socket and a small ratchet. The cap popped off now. Pull up the puncher. You can see all the pitting on the contacts over there. And if I bring it close in. You can see that one side of the contact, so the right side contact is still okay, but the left side is badly worn. Hence the reason why it's clicking. So in order to remove this, we'll just open up this nut over here and we'll pull up this side. The 17 mm socket. So we've taken that off, and now we're going to take the bottom 17 off to inspect the contacts and give it a good clean. You don't have to do that, but I generally like to do that, just so everything goes back in the same order. But this is the good side. We'll get to the contacts soon. So this comes off like that. You've got a little shim there. Your nut goes on the top. So just be careful of the o-ring here as well both sides have it so be careful of the o-ring over here this this side has it because it's connected up to your main positive feed I just pulled that from there so you can see this contact is like new it's not worn down or anything be careful of this wire over here don't accidentally break it because you'll have to resolder it notice all this dirt over here as well you just want to give it all that a good clean this is actually quite a good design on these starter motors. If you watch my other rebuild video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, these starter motors, they're completely sealed from the set. So the motor part itself here is completely sealed from any dust, which is quite good. And also the front gear over here. But if you do have a manual car or a manual vehicle, I do recommend you might actually have to open it up and give it a good clean. You can watch my other videos if you want to see how to do that. Because generally the clutch dust um, gets everywhere inside the starter motor and the pinions and stuff like that so it's always good to give those a good clean 
this plate comes out like so so the bottom part just goes on to there so it comes off like that and this one is from the motor side goes back in that orientation so we'll just use some compressed air and just get all that dust out of there internally from the plunger side you have this ball bearing over here so that goes just in the center there right in the center so remember to put that back in if that falls out don't forget that so now we'll inspect our parts if you look at this plunger over here it's not too bad this will come out fine with the clean but if we compare the two contacts so this contact over here this is that contact over there there's a huge difference So I'm going to open up the motor over here. I don't have to, but I just thought I'd do it for you all. Just in case you have a manual car or a manual Prado or Land Cruiser. Would pay to just check. Just to ensure that it's clean. Like I said, from any clutch dust. Your starter motor in there. Like I said, it's quite a good design, it's sealed from all the elements. So, generally, whatever dust you get in here will be the wear and tear from the starter motor itself and the brushes. So, to inspect the brushes, since we've taken it off already, it'll be worth just checking it. Just have to take those two screws off. And if you want, try and push this whole gear out as one. I'll show you that. Just, and just remember, this is the, it's like a fiber washer. It goes this way. So this fiber washer, just remember that goes and just protects the bearings. Now we'll just take the screws off for that end. Again, I'll just mark it so it goes back. When you pull this off, you will have to put the brushes back in. It can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. So just bear that in mind. This one's a good design. The brushes didn't come out with the back cover, so that's good. So now we can inspect and just have a look at the the motor. One important tip I can give you guys is that 
when you're pulling out your brush pack if you want to avoid the headache of having to re-push each one and all which is kind of a pain pull it out halfway so very carefully just wiggle it out for me I'm using a 27 mm socket so push the armature down take your socket and just put it in like there like so now you can safely pull out your armature and make life a lot easier when you're coming back to reinstall it now we'll have to clean up each one of these contacts over here clean up all the dirt inside there and just generally give the field windings and everything a good clean but like I said because this is a sealed design there isn't much dust or dirt in here that's why I do like these designs they're pretty good we'll just give everything a good clean and then we'll come back As you can see, we're just cleaning off the carbon buildup. I'm going to do this very carefully and evenly. And then you want to re-clean all the grooves internally. So now that you've got the idea of how it's done, we'll do this and we'll come back to the next step. So that's after cleaning it. All you want to do is just take off the carbon buildup on the contacts. So I'll just go ahead and clean the grooves again in between here. Just make just to make sure none of the dirt's got in there and I'll give it another blow or use a brush or something somewhere and just clean it up if you don't have compressed air. So what I'm going to do is going to pack this bearing with grease. Similar to packing a trailer bearing, I'll just pack it in there. This bearing was fine, didn't have any grinding noises or anything. So just by packing the grease, I don't know if you can see that, but now the grease has come out there. So never just put it at the top, force it in there, force the grease in there, because all the old grease has come off. And we'll give everything a good clean again, once all that's done. Make sure you clean off the excess grease and clean up the contacts again. I'll use a clean cloth and just give that all a good clean. I've just got some electrical parts cleaner. I'll just use that to clean everything off. I think in the US you guys have Deox or something similar. Now if you listen to the bearing. It's basically smooth. We'll just add a little bit to the bottom case over here. Just a little bit. Or if you don't want to add it there, just just make sure it's there's a little bit extra here at the top. And when it sits there, it's not metal to metal contact. And we'll just reassemble this part 
I'll just show you. I gave everything a good clean over here. Never throw these starter motors away. They're designed to be rebuilt. All the components are generally available in most countries. Unless you've got a very old or worn out starter motor, I would say about 80% of the time they can be rebuilt. Take off any grease on the bearing race so that it doesn't touch the brush when you go inside to reinstall it. Slowly push it out with the socket, then your socket will pop out, and you've got your new, or rather, your cleaned up armature and everything reinstalled perfectly with ease, and you won't have problems. Trust me, from experience, you don't want to have to deal with having to push each brush on, it's a real waste of time. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall this cleaned out rear housing you can always apply a bit of anti-seize here as well if you use this vehicle more on the salt or something similar it will just prevent it from getting seized in at a later date so what you want to do is make sure this is lined up so when installing it that the screw holds line up So just make sure those holes line up there. Is it there? That's why I always say the marks make life a lot easier. I always mark everything. I will just go ahead and give this a clean, like I mentioned earlier. Now that we've got all that cleaned up, I'll just go ahead and put the motor back in there and we'll just test it. So we'll just put a positive feed onto here. And just make sure everything's fine before proceeding any further. It doesn't hurt to grease this gear up as well. Don't forget to grease this bearing up in here and install the the fiber washer just at the top there. So don't forget that. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall it back in there. There's no need to go super tight on those bolts. So now what we'll do is we'll just mount it again and we'll just hear the starter motor. Unfortunately, the reassembly of the starter motor ended there. I didn't realize that my memory was full until I went to put the starter motor back into the vehicle. So anyway, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, everything is reverse of removal. So you have seen the step until the, the motor actually went back into the starter. All you have to do is finish putting in these terminals over here so just make sure you don't forget that o-ring where i showed you earlier in the video that goes on this side for the motor and this side goes for the positive feed put that back in the same orientation you can go back to the beginning of the video if you need to re-watch that so these are the contacts this particular starter mode had two of these contacts in place so as you can see here that one and that one this is from another Toyota. This is a Toyota Celica for memory. It's about the same design. So I've gone and upgraded the context to the Land Cruiser context. This is the part number if anyone needs it. 
So these are the larger contacts and you'll see the size of this now. This is the size difference if ever anyone needs a reference. So there's that size. And it's about 20 mm wide. And here's the old one for reference, the worn out one. About 20 mm, old round. So for anyone uh, contemplating whether this will work, this does work and it works well. So all that's remaining is the plunger. Make sure you clean up the surface, so the copper contact surface which comes on, which touches this part here. So, for, so if you imagine that's inside the motor, imagine this is the plunger. The part that comes here and touches both these contacts, clean that mating surface at the bottom here. So that whole copper surface should look something like this. Just give that a good sand. Just like I showed you earlier on the armature, how you cleaned it that way. Just give it a good, a good clean up. So keep rotating it and just give that whole bottom surface area a good clean. And then you can go ahead and just reassemble it and put the cover plate back on with the rubber gasket. And when pushing it back in, it just literally just slots in. And it clicks back in place. And just make, give it a light pull and push, and then you know it's secure in place. Do the glow plugs glow, and then we'll start the vehicle. That starts perfectly now. <laughs> 